Welcome back to Pathologic 2. In the last episode, we went to the funeral of our father and we were given their inheritance by Aspity, someone who knew Isidore Barak very, very well. Among the inheritance, we got a list of a bunch of people. All of them seemed to be kids, except possibly the eighth, which is a mysterious sigil that we can't read. So we need to go speak with some of the people on this list to figure out why they were on the list. <clears throat> was Barak trying to help them? Were they in danger? Did they know something? For it to be in the warm vessel, as Aspidy called it, the thing that kept the most important parts of Isidore Barak, for it to be in there, it must be very important, which means those people are very important, those kids. So first thing I want to do is go to Notkin, because they were on the list. It's pretty much all we have to do, uh, as far as, like, markers on the map. And then there's a person selling a revolver for 3,000 coin. I kind of want to go over here to the village, but that's a pretty long way. It's 9.18 a.m., which isn't very late, but, you know, time is precious. If there's no marker over there, I don't think I want to go there. Yeah, let's just go straight here. We're moderately exhausted, not really hungry, pretty thirsty, but I don't have any water on me. Let's go. Oh, I also want to see if today is also meat day. Remember yesterday was meat day, according to the person on the tracks right about here? They sold me a bunch of meat and it was extremely good. It was a very good deal and it was very filling. I think it's the most filling food I've gotten so far. Hmm. <clears throat> no, today is not meat day. I think they were sitting over here. Oh, look at that haze. That is so cool looking. Is there a source of water nearby? I don't know if there's one in the warehouses. Oh yeah, being a new day, I can probably re-loot containers. Oh, there's some water over there. Yeah, I definitely have looted that before, so I think it repopulates at the beginning of each new day. That has done wonders for my stamina. Oh yeah. What's Nokin gonna think of me? Remember last time I talked to them, I sorta of betrayed them? Kinda? And then they said, just come back later, I need to think? Cats know the fact or the matter. Ignore when a fool comes to chatter. Nice rhyme. What carry you in all those pockets, Barack? Tools. Never mind them. Here's what I'd like to know. What biz what business did you have with my father, with old Barack? We went to his place often. He used to teach us things. Why do you ask? So you used to go to his home together? All of you? Take a look at this list. Sometimes we would all go together, other times in twos or threes, or alone. Many things happened. Why do you ask, though? It's not like we imposed on him. He invited us. What did he want from you? <clears throat> you know what? Ask Capella. She's the oldest of us all and the best explainer. She's a good person, too. Who's this Capella? Fat Vlad's daughter. But she's not like him at all. She even lives in a separate wing of the house. 
Good. Don't hold her family against her. She's like a big sister to us all. She put together a union. A union? What union? Don't worry about it. Just a union of people under 15. Anyway, ask her. She might be mad at me if I say too much. Is she at her place in the lump? Damned if I know. Either there or at the station. Just don't stomp around if you ever go there. It's a discreet place, not for the grown-ups. The station is a discreet place? Oh, I just said that to myself before even reading this. The station is a discreet place? Trains have become rare indeed. Bet just did a bunch of things. Capella is a leader of the town's children. She might know what father wanted with the ones on his list. Some evenings, kids gather at the station. Ah, uh, evenings specifically. Well, I can't do anything about that just yet, of course. Okay. Well, we should head over there. It's pretty close, too. Mm. Do you have more things to trade? Because I remember you had amazing trades before. Needles for four. <clears throat> yeah, like some people I give charms to, they trade like four for it. But they'll give six for them. That's really good. Three for a scrap name, two for chalk, four for marbles. Well, here. Two marbles for two needles. And cloth gloves. I think I... Yeah, I can totally get those, actually. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17... Eh. Um... Yeah. Awesome. For doing dirty work. Thanks so much, kid. Great trades. Wow, I actually have clothes. I have shoes and gloves. I think that's more than I ever wore in the original Pathologic. I just went around town dodging clouds of miasmatic uh, plague in my undies. <laughs> Oh, right, you got stuff too. You trade for a whole bunch of different things. Fishing hooks, three, safety pin two, spring four. Don't need lockpicks is the thing. I already have two. In good condition too. Um, I only have one morphine, so trading for morphine will be good. Needles are always good. Yeah, let's get the morphine. At least the morphine. And then the needles as well. Should I overtrade to improve my reputation? Yeah, I'll, I'll throw in some fishing hooks. Oh, I don't think that actually improves my reputation because the warehouse is a place with no reputation. Yeah, I don't think there's any point to overtrading here. Oh well. No one else wants to talk. No one wants to trade. Let's go. To Capella. Ah, Capella. Thank you, that's a great pun, I know. Go through the hole up here on the right and then straight through. I want to buy a Twirine as well. Hey kids. Oh, I can talk with them. May. What's wrong with her? We didn't do anything, I swear. We saw her crying, asked what happened, but she just bawled even more. Eh, girls. Maybe she's hungry? I guess. She must be hungry. Why else would she be crying? Or maybe she's lost. I guess. She must be lost. Maybe we should take her to the station. And get her on a train to somewhere. 
trains aren't running now, but we should probably see if she lives around here. Yeah, you do that. Vol. I'm not crying. I'm not. I'm just upset. Upset because they're always picking on me all the time. Who's picking on you, dear? Everyone. How are they picking on you? They say I'm ugly. I know I am. But why do they need to keep saying it all the time? Hmm. Middle option or the top one? Either you're unlike anyone else, trust me on that, or nonsense, you're very pretty. I don't know, the top one feels like... I don't know, the top one feels a little bit weird to me. You're unlike anyone else, trust me on that. Whoa. Hi. Evergreen. Here, have this item, this is for you. What's this? A sign of trust. As we share things with each other, so do we share our feelings, warmth, kindness. We see now that you are a good person. The town trusts you. Do you want to become its part? I'm sorry, who are you? Do you want to become its part? Like, become part of the town, absorbed into it? I am its part. Do you like the item I've given you? Will you find any use for it? I don't really know what you need. I chose randomly. We don't know you very well yet. What do you want in exchange? It doesn't matter. All that matters is that there was an exchange. You give me something of yours and receive something of mine. All items are charged with bits of your warmth and life. Give me whatever you want. To others, give what they want. They won't ask a lot. So if you share generously and give more than is asked, the town will remember that. It's just a token, after all. A tradition. Are they basically telling me if I over-trade that my reputation will go up? Hmm. I know this tradition. You'll get to know us better. We'll get to know you better. Our town is like a family. You've returned. Now please help us remember, accept, and maybe even love you. I'm saying it on behalf of everyone. Bayarla, Basagan. Please relay my gratitude to them. Oh, did they just give me a thimble? I think. At least a thimble, not sure about something else. A couple things popped up as well. Mm, this. I've yet to seriously barter with anyone, not men, women, not even teenagers or kids. What do you mean seriously barter? Barter is not only a way to obtain useful items, but a way to get closer to people. Everyone has something of their own to share. <clears throat> I wonder if they just mean that in the general sense of over barter, give people gifts, kind of, um, just to get your reputation up, or if they mean that something more specific, like maybe people will share information with you? Open up if you give them something really good? I don't know. It's very vague. I don't know why it says I've yet to seriously barter with anyone. What do you mean? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Could always use more needles. Ah, I don't want to trade bandages, though. Or the immunity boosters that I just traded for a little bit ago. I think I traded four for them. And they're only willing to take them for three, so... Mm. No, thank you. Hey... I was only expecting the tragedians on the first day because they were sort of tutorial helpers. What are you doing here? Where go you, friend? What plan is next to follow? Well, where do you think I should go? What should I start with? What say the townsfolk? 
The townsfolk? They're so alike, aren't they? A backdrop, faceless. They surely know nothing important, right? A hive, a swarm, a flock. No use for names. Whatever one knows, they shall all know in turn. A hive, a swarm, a flock? The crowd is but a many-headed beast. Like it or not, you are but one such head. They know you better than you know yourself. Have you heard them, Barak? Communication. See how it means finding a common ground? Oh yeah, they were eager to communicate with me yesterday. My ears are still ringing. They all know something of your tale, Barak, and from each one a different strand of it. Some, some know where you're to go, others will say why you must go, and some will warn of danger, terrible danger, that you may avoid. Uh, that you may avoid it. Okay, so in other words, listen to the townsfolk. They'll give you little pieces of what you should be doing that day. So I'm the only one who knows nothing. <laughs> that is because you are alone, Barak. Confused, alone, losing the plot, Barak. Does not the map of your own mind suffice? Then talk. Communicate. Here. Hear me now. Teensies and tots, the town's own young, indeed already know who wait for you today. If you still doubt, then speak to one. Any child. Yeah, this day does seem to be all about children. I mean, the list alone showed that. What should I do exactly? Where should I go next? Talk to the crowd, Barak. To faceless folk, all so alike in their great numbers. Hear them, the buzzing swarm, the squawking flock. The scent, the trail you seek is there in what they say for life is what they talk about. And see, Barak, a doctor's path is too about life. They talk about so many things. Simple townsfolk know more than it seems. If I'm unsure what to do, I should talk to them. Been told that young kids may have information for me. Almost there. <clears throat> Poachered. Have you been to the governor? About the patrols, I mean. The pay is good, but too good, actually. Suspicious. What's going on with that? Why is Sabra paying so much for patrols? What patrol? All strong men, who aren't cowards, should report to the town hall, it went. They might even announce an emergency situation. I wonder why. A revolt at the factory, maybe? It's not working. Hear the silence? So the governor's in the town hall. Got it. Yeah, just that conversation alone just gave me a pretty big hint on a place to go. Governor Sabarov is in the town hall. He's in charge of father's case. You don't want to trade for anything I have. Kayura. Very creepy looking as always. <clears throat> See you tonight at Sabo's place. It's dangerous, yes. This is Nagan Pa Dagu Dazams. A place you must not bring outsiders. Everyone's looking for a shop Nakadig. It's good they forgot Saba. Do you go there every night? The kin can even live there. People come and go, yes. So, I'm kin to you? You are kin, Katongar. Saba talked about you a lot these days. We waited for you, Yargachin. So many of these options are so sarcastic. Like, there's this kind of like warm reception to this character, the Harusbex, that's been away since they were a little child, and they're kind of, I mean, they're welcoming me back. Yes, you are kin. You are here. You're a local. And then I can just say, your meetings don't fit into my plans. Or, in that case, you can wait some more. <laughs> Not going to say those. Um, got it. Oh, what just, something just got added. 
Sometimes after dark, step people meet at Saba's place. Not just them, either. Man, there's so many places to go. So after dark, I should go to Saba's place. I should also go to where the kids gather at the station. I also need to talk with Capella, and I also should go to the town hall. Pemmican. Immunity boosters for Pemmican? It's more valuable to me. Oh, or one bandage for Pemmican. That's totally worth it. Did I see a cat? Whoa. Just trading just started a conversation? With this, I give you some of my hope. We have no doctor now. Who will help us? Who will treat our injuries or deliver children? You're a surgeon. You can do all that. So have some of our hope. And hope often leads to love. Oh, is that... They were specifically looking for a bandage? Is that it? Is that what they meant about giving people what they want? Like people who look... Like this person are really interested in bandages. Obviously they trade for some other stuff like the immunity boosters. But they responded specifically to the bandages. Talking about medical care. Hmm. I haven't carried this item for long. There's little of me in it. Still, have some of my warmth. Okay, what did that just do? I've yet to seriously barter with any men, teenagers, or kids. Oh, it updated to not include women, I guess? Like every time I, if I trade with a, a man, it'll get rid of that. Or a teenager will get rid of that. Or a kid, it'll get rid of that, I think. I think that's what changed. It's very interesting. I wonder what that does like does it do anything in particular hmm. you know all oh. saints and matchy alike they only speak of love. Love and patience are our most precious gifts. I, I said, oh, because I was surprised who they were. Um, I thought maybe they were a kid. I thought they looked a little bit strange. I didn't really look at their face. And it's Clara. Why are they... Why are they outside of Capella's place? Do they know there's something special about Capella today as well? Are you sad? I haven't got time to be sad. I just wanted you to know, I sympathize. I've never had parents. I've never had anyone. So I know how terribly awful it must feel right now. What do you want from me? I'm sorry I said mean things to you. That's why you think I'm evil, isn't it? But it was the truth. Hmm. What do you want? I just wanted you to know that the girl from the cemetery, Grace, is talking to your father right this moment. And I think it strains her a great deal. What? What do you mean talking to my father? What the... She is? They're speaking, and I think it's killing her. Could you tell her to stop, please? I think she might listen to you. I feel sorry for her. Do you understand? Right this moment? Right this moment. And he's responding? Why won't you believe I'm a good person, Barack? Open your eyes. I speak the truth. Remember, I'm always speaking the truth. Fine, I'll take a look. But if it turns out you lied to me... Grace is talking to my father this very instant. How is that possible? Yeah, what? Well, Clara said it's 
killing her, so I should probably go there soon. Well, I'm, I'm already at Capella's place. I might as well talk to them. Time doesn't pass while I'm having a conversation, I think. Hmm. How long should I wait? Like, I could take a boat. I got plenty of fingernails, but the boats don't really go super close to the cemetery. It wouldn't save that much time to go up to this boat and then go down here rather than just going straight across. Uh, anyway, let's let's talk to Capella. And then see how we're feeling. Oh, Jesus. Ozel. My wife was killed yesterday. How can I look our children in the eyes now? I've lost the right to be called their father. I'm sorry. I could have been assertive. Think faster when it went down. Could have acted quickly, efficiently, instead of staying in my head. If only... What's done is done. Live on, pal. For the children. They trade for water bottles. Three water bottles for a tourniquet. Heck yeah. Oh. And they just reacted to the water. I've carried this thing for several days. It wasn't easy, of course. With this, I share with you my fear, my sorrow, and my anger. It was tough, but now it's become a little easier. Just a little. Thank you for easing my burden. Just have some of my warmth. Warmth is life. Yep, got rid of men. Now just teenagers or kids. They'll take a tourniquet. One tourniquet for one needle? Meh. Mm, no. Hey, you're the messenger. Seaskin. I need to talk to Khan at the tower. Though the... I saw some kids in the background. Was that Notkin or something? Because I hear a cat. I'm sure there's more than one cat, but made me think of Notkin's cat. They're half. Though the town is all abuzz now, makes me kind of reluctant to leave. What tower? The polyhedron, of course. You blind, big fella? Just look over there. The tower across the river. Or polyhedron. The only place where life is real. When was that thing even built? It wasn't here when I left. Yep, there's another thing to do for today. Khan is in the polyhedron. Man, I have a lot to do today. Tweezers. Well, I need to trade with a kid, right? <coughs> um, yeah, trade up. Thimble. Great. With this item, I give you uh, some of my luck, I guess? People say I have that in spades. Don't know if I believe it. Now, what shall you give me? <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Courage. Oh, so they were a teenager, apparently? So I just need to barter with a kid. That looks like Notkin. Is that Notkin? Huh. What's going on here, huh? Mm, no, that's a funeral attendant. Hey, uncle. <laughs> dig a hole for us, will you? What for? We need it. I... Mm, mm, I don't like either of these options. <laughs> I don't think you do? Please, uncle, we only need a shallow one. A couple of shovel swings, nothing more.
Is it against custom to dig holes in this town as well? It was kind of hinted at in a couple of these dialogue options. Are you burying a cat? Yeah, I mean, no, not a cat. Then whom? Just the eighth. Huh? The eighth what? Well, the previous seven are already pushing the daisies, and nothing bad happened when we buried them, because the holes were shallow. Okay. I guess shallow ones are allowed. Alright, I'll dig you a hole. I hope I don't regret this. just happened? I helped them bury the eighth. I... Hmm. I don't think that was just a fun little game. That seemed way, way, way too significant to just be burying a simple doll and that that's it. That's the end of it. No, there's more to it. I wonder, oh hey, there's someone up there. I wonder whose cat that is that I'm hearing. Whose half is that? This is where Capella is, yes. Is that them that I saw upstairs? Ooh, nice wallpaper. Oh, that's to leave, but... I mean, that's leaving up here? Yeah. Wait, are you Capella? No. Crosses the stream. Wait, it's the shallowest. But I'm not smart. Yeah, I thought they seemed rather old to be Capella. Yulia? Um... Lyri... Lyri Cheva. I'm sure that's totally wrong. I'll just say Yulia. And you are? Artemy Barak, a doctor. How can I help you? I, this is a little bit weird to say, but I'm going to say it. You have incredible eyes. Who are you? The Canes had a rather unusual notion of how they wanted the town's routes planned. They believed the routes of choice influenced people's mood. Their soul state. I found the challenge intriguing. If a bit insane. So the town's streets are your doing? Not all of them, but yes, to some extent. Why the hell did you make the town so awkward to navigate then? 
The Canes implied that the town already has something akin to a nervous system. They suggested I view it as a huge <laughs> living creature. So my job was acupunctural. Do you take the Canes' ideas seriously? Well, they have built the polyhedron, haven't they? There it is. I was even allowed to ascend it. There wasn't allowed inside. The cathedral, the crucible, the still water. All those buildings are machines that work with the same idea. What idea? When a person finds themselves in a relatively enclosed space, it influences their inner state in a certain way. It's no secret. The Canes are trying to create buildings that enhance spiritual growth. As in... Well, we're moving to the field of philosophy now. Not my area of expertise, but as far as I can tell, in their eyes, humans aren't paragon of animals, but rather larvae. They believe the human spirit is a spring to be stretched. Their favorite image. Why stretch it? To make people desire new things, weird things, things beyond their limits. People do that their whole lives anyway. What a strange person. The name Yulia sounds vaguely familiar, but I don't remember much about them from the first pathologic. <clears throat> yeah, so... The Canes want to expand the very concept of being a human in the human spirit, spiritual growth. Oh wow, what a cool room. Yeah, look at this. Oh my god, great view. That's a really cool room. Who's that in the painting? I think you've found us. You are Artemy Barak. Greetings. Greetings to you too. Are you Olgimsky's daughter? Yes. My name is Victoria, but friends call me Capella. Well, are we friends? Yes. Really? How did you figure it out so fast? I can see. I haven't yet mastered the art, but I do see things sometimes. It's a gift I inherited from my dear mother. Oh, that's probably who's in the painting. Are you talking about clairvoyance or what? I mean, it's hard to explain. Sometimes I know what a person will say before they say it. Or I imagine a situation, and the next day it unfolds exactly how it was in my head. Sometimes I even know past events I wasn't present for, like which drawer father put papers into years ago. A powerful gift if you're telling the truth. Not that powerful. Not with me. Not like my mother. She could see at will. Although even with her, it could be fickle. I only see rarely, and I don't control it at all. I'd like such a gift myself. Mother said it would pass. I'll either see by my own will, or lose it entirely. I don't like either of these options. Better to lose it, then? Not really? Or you'll start seeing ghosts and unicorns? Uh, I don't like that, but let's go with that option. Your undue sarcasm has been noted. Damn it. <laughs> it's not so rare a gift in this town. There were once several women who could see. Mother, Nina Kena, Katerina Sabarava, perhaps. Outsiders arrive with such skepticism, but they're always soon astonished. Astonish me then? I don't like doing this. Okay, astonish me then. It's the best option. You likely aren't afraid of blood, right? Of course not. I'm a surgeon. Do you know what I see? Under your feet, the hard soil acts as though spring melt, 
each step forming an imprint filled with red. You leave pools of clotted blood in your wake, Artemy Barak. I thought this must be about the murders, but you're no murderer. What does it all mean? Pools of clotted blood in my wake. That sounds related to Clara's... Um... Premonition. That there would be blood in my future caused by me. You're asking me? I have no idea. I feel a current in my veins. This must be the illumination Mother shined with. Did something happen? You look worried. I wanted to ask you something. Go ahead. He wrote this note. Here, take a look. Why are these names listed together? Yours is on here too. I don't know, but I have a suspicion. Why are you frowning? Is it something bad? Well, no. About a year ago, your father began to seek our company. We all met together sometimes, or in twos or threes. It happened naturally. He taught us, I suppose, but not anything special. I think it was more about passing down something, something of great importance. I can't make heads or tails of what you're saying. You're an outsider. It's difficult to explain. We kids have our own town within the town, a separate one, and we govern it on our own. Don't give me that patronizing look. It's not some game. You, you wouldn't understand anyway. Go on, please. I'll do my best. Your father was shrewd. He can see beneath crude earth petty lies and hard truths. Khan used to say. Khan didn't like him much, but even he got out of the polyhedron to talk to him. He believed we were the ones who would remake this town, rebuild and conduct it in the future. He was preparing them to rebuild the town, Isidore was? Rebuild and conduct it in the future. Remake? You mean destroying this town? I don't know. Perhaps it doesn't need to be so drastic. Although, the more I think about it, the more disturbing it sounds. Perhaps there's a catastrophe upon us. Rumor has it the war moves eastward, and it won't end. Perhaps something is about to happen? God forbid, of course. Everything ends sooner or later, so will the war. That's what he was preparing us for, changing the town. I can see it now. He taught each of us something important. Perhaps, perhaps he gave a piece of himself to us. Yes, that must be what he did. Well, guess I'll keep an eye on you all. Father believed that the children on his list are the key to the town's future. Guess I should keep an eye on them in the future. Khan is in the polyhedron. Okay. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. And when I return... Hmm. I'm kind of smack dab in the center of three things I need to do. The most pressing is definitely Grace. But I'm not sure which one I'll do, but I'll be back soon.